G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I've got Peter Leeson from Vault. G'day, Peter. How you going, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, good to see you. You too, mate, um, you too. You came up in a very interesting car. Yeah, yeah, drove drove the Tesla up. It's, uh, it's uh, inc- I love the car, it's incredible, but no, a, a nice easy drive up here, nice and quiet, coming up to the the Smart Energy Lab, and now I'm also charging off renewable energy. Oh, it feels good, doesn't it? It does. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I had enough to get home, but a, a little top up isn't too bad. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So how long have you had the? Uh, it's a Model Three, isn't it? Model Three. Yep. I've had it about a year and a half, um, and it's incredible. So um, yeah, as I said to you earlier, we we developed solar farms, and I've been up at the farms yesterday. So driving around a few different farms, uh, one full charge got me pretty much around central Victoria and back down to Melbourne again. So, so you do a lot of driving. Yeah, I do a lot of driving. Yeah, I think I'm up to a year and a half, about 55,000 Ks, something like that. So, right. Yeah, I get around a bit. Wow, well, mm. that's cool. Yeah, I, I really get the feeling like this is the year of EVs for Australia. Like we've been lagging. Yeah, but- absolutely. Um, I was in Europe. I've been in Europe a bit lately, but uh, mid last year I was in Europe and the amount of electric cars there and the options like the BMWs, all the different options, it's incredible. But uh, when I got the Tesla, there was only one other Tesla in my area and now everyone's got one. Like you go down the street, you'll always see at least three or four white Teslas driving past, you know, <laughs> like they're spying on us apparently with their cameras. My, 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 my kids, because uh, my partner's got a, a Hyundai um, electric and my, my kids when they're in the car going, Dad, look, there's a Tesla. And I go, yeah, but you're in an electric car, but there's a Tesla. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it has a certain appeal, doesn't it? The kids love it. A lot of my, <laughs> um, my kids' friends, they're like, they'll just – like, oh, let's go sit in the Tesla and watch a movie. I'm like, they've all got iPads now, but they want to sit in the car and watch it because it's got a screen or they play the games on the screen. Do you put it in dog stuff. mode? Yeah, yeah. So my, my my dog comes to work most weeks and so I'll, I'll drive to the gym in the morning. Yeah. He just, I have the seats folded down. He just yep. sits in there in dog, dog mode. So oh. it doesn't matter what temperature it is. He's just happy to <laughs> lay in there and fall asleep. For those who have never heard of dog mode, uh, it's, an, it's a new software feature, I believe. I know, it's pretty, it's been there since I've had it. Is it? So oh, yeah, okay. I think it's been there quite a while. So it means that um, the climate control system's on and there's a big sign on the screen saying, I'm okay. Yeah, um, my owner will be back soon. My owner will be back soon. Yeah. So well, With a dog wagging its tail. Yeah, yeah, so I was thinking dog mode for kids. Yes, well, true. Yeah, I mean, I actually <laughs> might be in trouble. Though. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I think you would be. <laughs> officer, yeah, officer. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> I promise yeah. my kids are okay. DHS in here. knocks on the door next. <laughs> I right. like it. Yeah. So um, let's get on to vaults now. Look, I, I, you, you seem to pop out of nowhere with this product because I've known you for a long time in the industry, yes. and it's it's been, it's been about solar uh, installations. Yeah. Um, but now you're doing solar panels. Yeah. So um, I mean, we, we're pretty diverse. So we've got our started out doing resi commercial solar yep. uh, in 2008. Um, started. I've got a construction background as well as being an electrician. So we started uh, just. Like working in BIPV, uh, you know, 2008. 2008, 2008 I started. Oh my God, in that's the beginning of the solar revolution, really. Yeah. On grid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sort of saw it coming up. We yeah. read a little bit in the media. We we're doing a lot of commercial electrical, getting sick of builders going bust and losing lots of money. And we we're like, why don't we try solar? This would be fun. Um, <laughs> We're not realizing, obviously, how hard it can get. But uh, yeah, we we we've been in a long time. We started out really hard in resi commercial. We've always had that business, um, but then we've sort of diversified over time. BIPV consultancy, working with other product manufacturers and designing bespoke systems uh, since probably 2012. Uh, got to travel around Asia and that sort of stuff, doing installs and designing projects, which was really exciting. And then started developing our own product about eight years ago um, and you know sort of so we've got the solar business resi commercial which supports the knowledge hub to how do you install it how do you make it compliant what's the easiest way to install it? what are the barriers to market how do you sell the product um, and then we've got the solar farm business which has banked this entire thing and then you know uh, we've over time just sort of you know kept developing the product, right time to launch. And then, you know, branded Vault uh, early last year and and went through the launch in October. Great name. Yeah. 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 uh, People never say, how do you spell that? Yes. No, (laughs) it's it's easy. I'm actually surprised. What's the little dots for? Uh, It's supposed to be the sun and the earth. Oh, right. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we, you know, uh, it's, uh, we bounced it around. 
we were going to go Voltile, mm-hmm. so V O L T I L E, like Voltaire. Yeah, but then I thought it sort of sounds a little bit too much like volatile, <laughs> and uh, and then you know, so that went over to marketing. They were like, "That's a really terrible name," <laughs> but how about we go with Volt? And it's just worked well. So yeah, yeah. E- it's easy, it's recognisable. So yeah. Now stepping back a bit, I love to expand acronyms because mm-hmm. not everyone knows what B I P V is. Yep. Yes, uh, build an integrated PV. So it's where you integrate the photovoltaic cells into the building fabric. Right. Yeah, so into a construction material you would use to build the home. So instead of having a roof tile in the area where the, our solar tiles go, it's just the solar tile. So you, you install roof tiles up to a point, then you start installing the solar tiles where you want that, and then you continue. So other projects we've done um, is like facades. So instead of doing a glass curtain wall on a, on a commercial building, you might do a, a, a photovoltaic curtain wall. So it's just, you know, solar panels where you can't see the cells and it gets installed as a glass facade on a building. Is this translucent or...? or, or, or uh, okay. I, I don't do translucent just because I think it's an absolute waste of time and money because uh, the efficiency of the product is so low and the complications with wiring, maintaining the system if it ne- never needs to get replaced, where do you put the inverters, how do you isolate the system, those sort of things becomes very complicated. So we've always steered clear of solar sort of glass windows, but it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. And that's getting more into the integrated fabric of a window rather than just like a facade or a roof surface. But ultimately... Um, yeah, I've, I've been doing BIPV for a very long time. We've developed a lot of different products. We've worked on hundreds of different projects. Uh, the, the only place it really works from a residential aspect is the roof. That's the real estate that gets the sun. Yeah. Whereas, you know, facades, forget about it. It just doesn't make sense. You've got ease. You're, you're trying to block the sun from the building as much as possible. Uh, so it doesn't make sense. Commercial buildings, high rises, um, you know, there's a lot of proposed projects. I've worked with some of the biggest engineering firms in Australia to see if it works on, on buildings and it's very complicated. You know, how do you replace a solar panel on the facade of a 50 or 60 story building if it goes wrong and where do you put the inverter and yeah, the isolator yeah. and how do you run the cable in <laughs> um, and if each you know part of that window might be 30 watts or 40 watts because the more transparent the product the less power you're going to get yes, from it um, yes. so the less cells that are within that so you're going to come up with all these different barriers about how you actually um, you know get a return on investment for all the work you need to do just to put a 30 watt panel in a certain location. So uh, why isn't there more BIPV uh, in residential now? Uh, the, the There's a long history of people trying to develop products. Um, there's a lot of other products on the market. One of the key ones of the more well-known solar tiles that have been out there in the industry is that they've tried to create their own roofing product. So they've gone, oh, well, let's make a solar tile roof. That makes sense. But while we're there, we'll also make our own roof tile. However, you know, the new home market, mainly in Australia, it's a new home market product. Uh, You go and create a new roof tile, then you've got to go to a builder and that builder needs to trust Mm. that your product won't leak. Mm. Okay, Mm. so builders are very thinking about what roof products or what products they'll use in general, but roof products seal the home from leaking. Mm. If the house leaks, then they're in a lot of uh, trouble with costs and warranties. So what we've done is we've developed a product that actually integrates with a bridge tile roofing Roof tile. So oh, Bridge so, Tile is one of the largest roof tile manufacturers. Oh, right. So it's, it's the standard tiles that builders already use. Yep. And you can replace some of those tiles yep. with your panels. And there's a distribution model already set up around Australia. There's yep. roofers that already install that product. Um, the builders trust it. It's a ASX-listed company with over $3 billion of assets in this country. So they trust it's not going to leak. Yep. And they work with them already. We just tie into that. Oh, you need solar as well. You can have standard panels or you can do the, the vault solar tile. So you use a similar flashing system in terms of the way the overlap of a tile works? It, 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 what we've done is we've, a, a roof tile is a molded product, yep. or in Australia there are molded some roof tiles like the curved ones in, in Spain or, you know, or, or Europe and South America, they're an extruded roof tile. Yep. But a molded product is very difficult to simulate when we're using aluminium extrusions. So the, they're very, very similar. They've got water channels, courses, overlaps, all exactly the same. But ours come with additional features like you know uh, interlocks. Our bottom, and it's getting a bit more technical, but our bottom 
solar tile and our top solar tile have an interlock. So when you slide it down, it actually locks in place and seals, but then it also keeps it stuck down to the roof so you're not getting big gaps. Yeah. Um, you imagine like putting a 1.8 metre wide solar tile on a roof, yeah. as you mentioned, wow, that's big. Yeah. It is. So if the roof is uneven, then one corner is going to be sitting up 20 mil. Ours actually pin down at the bottom and fix at the back. Right. So it's fully locked So you in. can accommodate those older buildings with slightly wobbly roofs. Yeah. Well, most, the new, most of the older buildings actually have pretty good roofs. It's the <laughs> new buildings oh, really? that, are, that, that, that have the issues with the, the type of timber that's getting used and oh, the build okay. quality these days. So, yeah, yeah, yeah you might get uh, you know, 10 mil variants between trusses and then th that's going to cause some issues. Now, who would be installing these tiles? Is it the builder or the electrician? Uh, so the electrician would be installing. So what we've done is we've set up a... Um, a model where we, we're partnering with 100 solar companies around Australia, we've already got quite a few already on board. Um, we go through an interview process to bring them in and then we do all the training around installation, sales, marketing, design, engineering and so on. But ultimately, one of the barriers to market and why we haven't seen that much BIPV in the market yet is because the roofing companies have tried to sell solar. Well, they, they, they know how to sell roofs, not mm. they don't know how to sell solar. So. We've, we're enabling a standard solar company without a roofing licence to partner with us. Bridge Tile install the roof component. Uh, the solar company can install the solar tiles and wire it up and they work together with the roofer on site to finish the system. And then the roof is signed off by the roofing company. Yeah. So this is what we believe the first time this has been done in Australia, whereas solar companies can actually go and you know, compliantly sell solar tiles to the market with all the training, the setup, the relationships, all of that that we've already got. But they'll just get, once they're on board, they'll get the, the product spec, the product, they show up on site when the roofers are there, the roofers install the sark and the battens and you just lay the solar tiles. And mm -hmm. it's about twice as quick to install as a standard panel system. Yeah. There's no mounting frame. There's oh, no yeah, cutting of tiles. There's no I was just about to say none that. of that. So stuff. yeah, no cutting tiles. Well, mm. that's going to be a good time. So it's one of the uh, worst parts about a tile roof and fixing well, panels to it. <laughs> a lot of people say aside, you know, like obviously the key thing about building integrated PV and, yeah. and solar tiles is the aesthetics. Yeah. So, you know, if you're trying to sell a solar tile because it's going to generate more power, that's ridiculous. But what you're going to get is a solar power system that can generate as much power but you can't see it. Yep. So uh, in 10 years time though, we're gonna look back and we'll be like, oh, on a tile roof, we used to install the new roof on a brand new home. And then the solar guys would come in, or girls, and they would lift the roof tiles, grind them out to make the roof not waterproof. And then we put brackets in there and we put this huge element menu system. And then we get these two meter by one meter solar modules and we'd mount them on the roof and we'd wire it up. And then that would be the solar power system. Whereas yeah, our model is you literally show up with the roofers, it gets laid, installed, we've got our own containment and trunking system within there, and uh, and see you later. Then the roof gets finished off around it by the roof tiles. Yeah. Wow. Look, I mentioned, you, you know, the uh, area efficiency might be lower, but you can actually cover more area too, couldn't you? Like In a sense, you can get into the corners and that sort yeah. of stuff. But I mean, generally speaking, unless you're going to go crazy on a home, yeah. you're not really taking up most of the space. Townhouses are a bit different, yeah. you know, because you get these... As soon as you bring in a townhouse, obviously you've got a smaller roof space, so you've got more hips, valleys, ridges, that sort of stuff. So you do get tighter spaces. So yes, we can get into more corners and that sort of stuff. But our efficiency on, we've got two different versions, the lodge and the plenum. So the plenum's a, uh, matches with a terracotta roof tile made in Spain, the bridge tile import. So it's got a you know, 50 year color warranty, highest quality tile in the world. Um, and then you've got the Australian made concrete roof tile, which is the lodge. And so the, our lodge version pairs with that. The lodge is 19.5% efficient. Oh, wow. So we're the highest efficiency solar tile right in the world. Yeah. Like we are, there is not a solar tile in the world that's more efficient than our product. Um, and then the, the plenum's 18.8. So you're not actually giving away that much margin yes. on being integrated. So the crystalline silicon then? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yep. So we're actually using MWT cells, so right. metal wrap through. Yep. Yeah, cool. Hmm. Um, where are they manufactured? So they're manufactured in China currently, uh, 
obviously, yeah, it's very hard to manufacture here in Australia. I think it's ninety seven percent of the world's panels are manufactured in China. That's so. right, and and and, and it's <laughs> it's it's super challenging. But where yeah. our our modules are made on a two gigawatt line, yeah, um, and they're also they're they're rear contact. So when they're put together, they're put together by the machine. So the string in process is different. So if you imagine a standard module, you can fully automate that process. Yeah. But then you go to a manufacturer and say, I've got this bespoke product yeah. um, I want you to make. It's a two by, you know, they're full cells, let's say it's a two by seven or a, you know, or a two by 14 if they're half cuts. Um, and then they, there's going to be a lot of manual labor in that. Manual labor brings additional cost. Okay. But what the big challenge is, it, it it destroys the quality because you've got very limited quality control because you're going outside of a fully automated, you know, process where you've got all the QA and everything there waiting to go where you might have to line up the cells manually and then it becomes an issue. So what happens with this process is you type in it's a two by seven and it's all placed in there by a machine because the, it's real contact, the cells. So, the cells, so, the place okay, so we're getting a far more automated process yep. with the manufacturing of our product using the MWT cells. Right. However, uh, currently uh, there's a lot of demand for manufacturing in Australia. And our goal has always been to manufacture our product in Australia, being that it's bespoke, a low volume, we believe we can get it at the same cost point of what we can manufacture in China. And we'll continue to use China for our export market or some of our export markets uh, due, due to location and logistics at the start. But um, yeah, so we're doing a business case right now to manufacture here. Uh, we're looking at plant and machinery, we're getting some experts to look at it. We're working with uh, AMGC on advanced manufacturing. And uh, hopefully by uh, late 2024, we'll have financial close on the manufacturing line. It's a, it's a long period of time, a couple of years to get there, but uh, then 2025, we'll hopefully be running modules uh, off a line here in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that is exciting. That's, it is, that's really, yeah. That's really good. That's super exciting. And considering that um, we actually have the raw materials here in Australia too. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. And and it's it's steps towards. Mm. So, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to make cells here straight away. Mm. You know, we're probably going to need a gigawatt or two gigawatts of manufacturing capacity here in Australia to actually make cells and wafers and do all, all that sort of stuff here. But if we can start bringing some of the supply chain here, the aluminium, the glass, you know, the cabling, maybe the junction boxes, the connectors, that sort of stuff, you know, different components, we can start to get more of an Australian-made product rather than just importing everything and then putting it together here. So coming back to installing these tiles, um, can they be retrofitted onto an existing roof? Does it have to be done as a new build? That, no, they can, but it needs to be a re-roof. Right. So yeah, if, you're, if you've got your average size 280 square metre home, a re-roof might cost you twenty five dollars or $30,000, I'd yep. say, depending on what sort of tile and location and how, how difficult it is. So if you were going to re-roof your roof, it would make sense to do it. But if you're looking to do BIPV and you're buying a system for $12,000, uh, then you've got to spend an extra twenty five dollars on the roof to be replaced. Yep. Um, you, you would never, ever retrofit it on if they had the same tile that we pair with, you still wouldn't retrofit it because you've got uh, variances with things. So natural products with, you know, dimensions, they'll change. Over time, you know, roof tiles might go through a different mould, so there might be a slightly different dimension. Um, your batten spacings need to be absolutely perfect, and that's because we've got the interlock. So, you know, when you lay our system, it, it's basically your batten spacing has to be exact. And if it's not, then your interlocks won't work, so you'll slowly creep up the roof and your roof tiles won't align. So there's a few key differences about our product and the benefits of how it ties down to a roof, fully waterproofs the roof, has all the gutters and drains that mean that it's it's near impossible to retrofit to an existing tile roof. Right. And, and you can try it, but you're going to be there a long yeah. time and have a lot of headaches. <laughs> yep. Well, we do build a lot of new homes. Uh, yeah, 100,000 a year. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So it's a it's a long game. Um, but yeah. in, in the new home market too, the National Construction Code just updated. Uh, so it was brought out in October last year. Uh, the grace period is from uh, May till October this year. And then, you know, the, and within that, there's the energy budget, which calculates the space heating and cooling, hot water, uh, pool and spa pumps and lighting loads. And you get an energy budget for the square meterage of your home and the location that you live in. If you exceed that energy budget, societal cost of energy, so it includes gas, then you would need to install solar power. Or in some cases, you can get solar hot water. 
the uptake is going to go from probably 20% of new homes, 10 to 20% of new homes having solar power, to 80 to 90. Wow, I hadn't realised it was so huge. So that's a 30 megawatt market currently. Right. To a 600 Because of a change in the building market. code. Right. So that means so all these homes are going to have to have it as part of the permitting process. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a huge boom as we're seeing the residential market will start to contract as yes. all these existing homes have solar already and the opportunities aren't as great. We're going to see this huge drive towards solar companies working with builders and this huge opportunity within the market. So we're partnering with all these quality solar companies around the country and saying, well, you, you're going to continue to sell solar panels. Not every home's going to have vault on it. However, when you go to the builder, you can say, we've got vault and we've got standard panels. Now, if you want a fully integrated system that you can't see, here you go or you can have solar panels and batteries and EV chargers and all that sort of stuff. But if you partner with us, we can provide you all these solutions and you're going to need to be installed in every home after October this year. Yeah. What would you like to do? So there's a big opportunity right now for solar companies to go out there and actually start selling and learning how to work with builders. So that energy budget, would that include EVs? No, no, not at this point. No, there's there's, there's, there's no nothing in there for EVs. There is um, on the NCC, uh, and and I'm not an expert in this area of it, uh, for commercial buildings, mm. for the capacity of when you design a, a commercial building, you need to have the capacity to connect solar to it, but then also to have a certain amount of electric vehicle charges yeah. um, for the future use. But you don't you don't need to install them yet, yeah. unless you've got a public car park. Uh, but if you're just a, a private commercial building, um, you do need to have capacity for future installation. Gotcha. Okay, let's talk about some of the, the practical issues associated with having a BIPV roof using, say, Vault uh, as an example. Uh, can you walk on that roof? You cannot walk on the glass. Okay. So we've designed a very thick section of aluminium that's very structural, yep. that, that goes in between each solar tile. So it's part of the solar tile. So when you're installing, say you've got to lean over, you can put your knee or your foot on that yep. to, to, for the part of the install. Um, I wouldn't recommend walking up the roof though, but if you take a look at it like a Tesla roof, yep. that's a completely glass roof. Yep. So A, it's going to be, yeah, glass is not easy to walk on a 22 degree pitch, <laughs> um, but you can't traverse that roof at all. Right. Um, so we can obviously walk around on the roof tiles around it, yep. but then you can also land in and get access. I wouldn't recommend someone to try and walk up that you, you in essence, you probably could if you just stood on the right spot. Yeah. You step in the wrong spot, you could, yeah, your health and safety wise hurt yourself. It's probably a good idea not to encourage people to walk on their roofs even if they didn't have solar tiles. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's a safety issue. I mean, I think it's one of the biggest causes of uh, particularly uh, uh, elderly men falling off ladders trying to yep. clean their gutters. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, spot on. So, um, and, and look, the, you know, concrete roof tiles are not great to walk on because they break. Yeah. And old terracotta roof tiles are not good to walk on because they break and any solar business out there who's done a, <laughs> an old school terracotta install covered in lichen yep. will know the pain of going down to the roof tile place and buying 600 tiles to replace the ones that you broke. That's why I don't work on roofs anymore. I'm just too big for those tiles. <laughs> you, you've got to have those lithe yeah, um, apprentices yeah, who can step yeah, on them very gently. Almost like ballet. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Uh, roof ballet. Yeah, so um, just following that one, let's say uh, you know, in terms of strength, you kicked a footy up onto the roof. Would it yep. damage the tiles? No. No, it wouldn't. So we've done all the hail impact tests and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, we, we have all, all the TUV compliance. And so it's the same test, test that a, a regular crystalline module must yep. meet? Same right. test. Yeah, all the, the same. The 25mm hailstone at terminal yeah. velocity. And then we've also got additional tests for building products, dynamic weather tests. Yep. Um, yeah, we, we've just done our first install in Europe. Um, so there's certain tests that we've done for there. But the US is very strict. Uh, we're currently going through the testing process for hurricanes and that sort of stuff in the US. So you've got to do, you know, wind-driven rain tests, uplift tests, fire tests, so on. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, there's a whole heap of additional tests that we need to do. I mean, people are often worried about solar panels blowing off the roof, but, I mean, the anecdotal evidence is it makes your roof stronger. Yes. Um, basically, mm -hmm. you've got a, a more rigid component yep. that's attached to the superstructure of the building. Yep. I remember seeing a picture after Cyclone Tracy went through, I think it was Tully, and the only thing left was the solar panels on the roof. Yep. All the roof had gone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, but you're talking about a very brittle product, a roof tile. Yeah. And, and even um, colour bond roofs, like yeah. you get a lot of wind under that thing and it's going to tear the screws and pull off. Well, we've, we're really fixing our products down. Yeah. And, and our, uh, because our, our solar tile interlocks, mm. it's, it's a skin that actually is fixed down to the roof. Like 
a lot. Like it's basically the, the top solar tile locks into the bottom solar tile and then there's screws fixed into the baton directly underneath that. Um, and it's not pull it shear. So oh, you've right. got this huge blanket on the roof and it's yep. not going to come off. So yep. our, our wind rate in and, and why there's quite a bit of demand, particularly um, on the southeast coast of the US, Florida, yep. because of the hurricane. The, yep. A lot of products don't pass the hurricane tests. Yep. Yeah. If you did break a, uh, a solar tile, you know, let's say someone threw a big brick and it broke, what would yep. you do? Uh, I mean, so it, it's obviously going to be difficult to, you know, pull it out and install like any solar product would be. Um, but uh, if you can't get the solar tile, you can just remove it and replace it with roof tiles. Right. So it, it, it's not a problem. So let's say in you know the question comes up a lot. Of what happens in ten years' time if you know I've, there's a fault or one of the solar tiles breaks and you've got the newer, higher wattage version of that solar tile? Um, you know you would obviously just remove it, reconfigure them down to remove the the broken one, and then replace it with roof tiles. Yep. So if you wanted to remove the system. You can just remove it and replace it with roof tiles. These roof tiles have been installed in Australia for 30 or 40 years and they will continue to do so because it's one of Australia's largest roofing product manufacturers. Yeah. So you, that the tiles will be available. So you can have a sort of level of redundancy in your strings of panels. I mean, yep. they're relatively low VOC, aren't they? Yeah, I think we're about 13 volts VOC. Right. Yeah. So you, you need a lot of them in series, which yep. means you've got a bit of redundancy. Yeah, absolutely. You're yeah. losing 13 volts if you lost one. Yeah, and that, look, 10 years' time, what inverter are you using? What is the, the voltage windows, the yep. voltage windows are getting better and better and the efficiencies yeah. and tracking. Thousand volts better. coming, thousand volts yes. is coming for domestic, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you, I mean, but you want to re design any system with redundancy, yeah. you know, like it, for people who will go out and install, you know, the minimum amount of VOC um, or VMP, say, for the PowerPoint track and all the startup voltage of an inverter, uh, and then you get a really hot day and your inverter's not working. It's, it's just a really foolish design. Mm. So you always want to have tolerances within that. And if not, select a different inverter or go micro. You remember the, the, the one kilowatt systems? Yeah, and it was so hard to get above the start voltage with yes. just like eight panels. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, like the, the pains. But then, yeah, I also remember installing my first system, which was Ample Sun. Yeah. And they were like 90-something volts each yes. in film modules. And we were doing, you know, 21-panel system, 2.1 kilowatts, seven strings of three. Yeah, a lot of parallel. Yeah, and yeah. we were using AeroSharp inverters yep. and to put that on the wall, you would have to <laughs> fabricate a steel frame so it wouldn't rip the building that up. That was the, uh, the the dual MPPT. It was quite a big deal it back was, then. 30-something kilo. Well, no, 49 kilos. I guess. Yeah, no, it was more yeah. than 30 kilos. Yeah, 49 it kilos. Was, I remember lifting one. I go, jeez, only three kilowatts. You'd break it. You'd pop a shoulder just... Um, yeah. And you saw me with those three kilowatt hot yeah. swaps and they weigh like two kilos. Uh, yeah, if that. <laughs> like, it's just like straight out, straight in. And, yeah, I just... You know, some of those inverters back then, the yeah. iron core, and yeah, they're oh, insane. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's right. It had a full-on iron core. Hey, I made a few notes here, and I, I, one of the questions I was going to ask you is, so um, to develop the product, what are the technical hurdles you had to overcome? <sighs> so, I mean, one of the key technical hurdles has been cell sizes. They mm -hmm. keep getting bigger and bigger, but we've got limited real estate in terms of what your baton spacing is to terms your exposed face to, yeah. to the sun. So that's that's been a big um, challenge finding the right cells and design it so you can really optimise. Like, how did we get the most efficient solar tile in the world? We pushed the limits mm. and we redesigned and redesigned and redesigned. But the main challenge has been um, how do we create a product that's easy to install, is super lightweight and the lowest possible cost so you can get uptake in the market. Um, we've done that by extrusion and glass. So other products in the market have come out and I've had plastic so a plastic solar tile does not make sense putting plastic on roofs. Every solar company learned that when they were installing DC isolators and they'd break down because the UV stabiliser and the plastics were no good. Uh, the Basically, um, having a plastic product on a roof is not ideal, but there's a lot of compound, a lot of mass, that sort of stuff. Um, we've gone, nah, we want something that's going to last for 30 years, aluminium and glass. Same principles of solar panels. How do you get a moulded product that's a roof tile and how do you get an extruded product of aluminium? How do you get that to make something that looks very similar that will, won't will leak uh, with all the gutters and that sort of stuff? So we've got four different extrusions around the frame, the left, the right, the bottom and the top. And they're very complicated extrusions with very complicated cuts. And that's been the biggest challenge, trying to get something that's extruded 
to match a molded roof tile product. And now that we've done that, then you have to overcome challenges like, okay, we want to have limited connections in the roof space. We don't want to have a, you know, some of these products, I mean, even the recent ones, they're like 47 or 50 watts. But going back five, eight years ago, they're coming out at 30 watts each, right? So you've got these, you know, huge amount of um, of connections inside a roof space. So we've gone as large as possible. So our bigger solar tiles, the Planum's 115 watts. Wow. And the smaller one's 105, the Lodge. Now they're both sort of similar sizes, but you're determined by the amount of roof tiles you're replacing because it has yep. to be exact. The um, Having a 1.7 metre roof tile, you've then got to pin it onto these uneven roofs, as I said earlier. So we've created an interlocking mechanism. So adding that into the product as well and how it interlocks and then how you install it, um, it's been really challenging to get a product that is more waterproof than a roof tile and then it's got to be easy to install. So we've added extra things into the product. So we've got a cable containment system. That's on, that was one of my questions it. is, what do you do with all the cables so they're yeah. inside the roof space? So we've got basically an aluminium cable tray that sits behind the junction box to uh, the top of the tile and the cables just sit in there and the cable just sit out the side and you just plug it in. Is slide it a across. separate component or is it, it part it of the It slides tile? into it. So it's a, oh. it, 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 com it comes as part of the tile. We've got one here. Shall we just bring yeah, it and put it on the table absolutely. here? We'll just put it straight down the middle here and... Uh, I think this is time to, to look at the, me the mechanics of how it's constructed. Right, great. Wow. So one of the key reasons we wanted to go with the MWT cell, we didn't want to see bus bars. Yep. So if you go and look at pretty much any solar tile product that's been released in Australia previously, they've had the silver bus bars, hmm. okay? You look at the roof, it's one of the first things you're gonna see. So. Hmm. Having the MWT cell, it's obviously printed on the acronym front. MWT metal wrap through technology. So yep. that's a through point, is it? Yeah, uh, exactly. Each of those little dots. Printed bus bars on the front. Yep. Printed circuit board on the back that gotcha. goes onto a conductive back sheet right. with a conductive paste. It's so uniform looking. There's, e exactly. There's none yeah. of the tabs that you normally see. Um, uh, and none of the bus bars. From a distance, yes. you can't even see it. Just um, so I mean, I can, I can I can send through some photos of systems where, um, yeah, I did a bit of a joke. We did our first install in Eltham in Melbourne. And, uh, you know, that was just two days before energy. So two days before our launch, we got, you know, we've got all our TEV and CC approvals and so on. And uh, we went out and did this install a, a couple of days prior. Two weeks later, I, it's near my home, so I drove past to take some photos. And I took some photos and I sent an email to the entire business and I said, holy shit, someone's stolen our solar tile system from the Eltham install, it's not there. <laughs> One of my sales guys drove past site because in the photo that I added, you just couldn't see it. My engineer rang me out straight away and he's like, Peter, he's like, how did they do that? And like even put the roof, why would they put the roof tiles back? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, just zoom in. And he's like, I am. And I'm like, zoom in close. He's like, I can't see it. So hence the purpose of what we did. So from a distance, you you simply can't see the product, which mm. has been a massive advantage of us. Of us. Matt Flame. Um, you know, really sort of dark cells with no bus bars and, and it's a really, um, it's really proven the point of aesthetics. Mm. You, you can't, it's solely you can't see. So is this the interlocking component here? Uh, so this is the interlock here. So the bottom side of it here, if you feel under there, has yeah, an interlock it. and it just slides down. It's a and reverse it, profile. One of the key things is yeah. solar installers don't know how to install roofs. Yeah. Okay, it's not the thing. So you've got to make it nice and simple. And it's like when I've gone over, I've trained people in Cambodia, I've trained people in, in France, um, you know, on installing solar that don't have a lot of experience. And it's when you tell them, putting an MC4 together. Yeah. You've got to hear it click. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I always had on is that no matter what language, <laughs> it's like you click it and you're like, you hear that? If it doesn't click, fire, right? So <laughs> just make sure it clicks. With this, it's the same thing. You actually, it just clicks in and you'll feel it click. So if you haven't, if it hasn't clicked in, you know it's not installed properly, you know it's going to leak. So it's a really simple product, but it also just locks down hard. So you, you can't lift the solar tile off above it without unscrewing it from the back. So where's the electrical connections? So the electrical connections here in the back. Yep. Um, as you can see, so you've got basically the cable tray. Let's flip it right over. Yep. Oh, wow. So obviously, so your cable here. So it's all um, anodized aluminium. All anodized aluminium, all nice and simple. And then this is oh, just one of the integrated cables. cable tray. That's it. Oh, so so nice. there's actually another tray here. I just have taken it out because it's easier to travel without it. But basically, you've got your plug here, you plug it there, and it'll just slide in. That's it. 
Right, and you have to, these are Evos. Yeah, Evos, right. yeah, no, we've been really, we know the mistakes, we know the pain, we've been doing this a long time, we've made sure that we've used all the components that are readily available, good to go, and really clear about the expectation yeah. on, on, on what the installs need to do. So how many watts is this one? This is 115 watts. 115 watts, yep. right. Cool. Mm. Now, when you install them, do they have to be uh, parallel or can they sort of be um, no, staggered? No, staggered. So roof tiles will always have a cross pond. Yeah. One generally always have a cross pond. So it'll be a half cross pond. Yep. So it'll be half a tile in. So uh, being that the, the tile that this goes with is about 240 millimetres wide, so your cross pond will be 120 mil. So generally we'll just offset 120 mil, yep. but you can go increments of that. You can have one start here, you can have it start wherever you want because right. ultimately you're filling the gaps. So you can do tiles. hit grooves and just stagger your way up to the Absolutely. Roof. You, can, you can set back and forth, you can do whatever you want. Because now panels have got so big, it's getting harder to actually fit them onto a, a yep. roof of hips. Yeah, and yeah. look, if you feel the weight of this, it's it's nine and a half kilos, so it doesn't oh weigh much at all. That's yeah. the other thing is just lifting panels is a two Existing plastic products yeah. have weighed 12 kilos and they were about 45, 47 watts, yep. the, the plastic solar tiles. So you imagine, and they're shorter, they're, they were half the, the distance. So when you're putting this up onto the roof, you can quite easily, nine and a half kilos, pass it up onto a roof and it's extending that distance and there's no issue. Nine and a half kilos lifting up above your head. Yeah. Super light to get around the roof. Yeah. Um, yes, you've got to install four of these and that's 460 watts versus trying to install a 430 watt, what's that, like 1.8 by 1.1 meter solar panel that weighs about 21, 22 kilos. These go down a lot quicker though because there's no mounting system. So let's just place it. And, so and, so and is this the top edge here? That's the and, top edge. And that's what you screw? Is so yeah, the roof, roof batten sits in there and you just put screws through there. Oh, stainless, right. so you just stainless tech screws. So tapping. Yeah, and that's why even to the point that it's got a little being a tradie, ridge. I know yeah. that you, that screw's going to wander around ever as you're trying to get it in. So we've put a little V channel in there. I can feel it. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that just holds a screw and puts it in. Nice. Now, one of the requests from our, our uh, one of our uh, distributors in Europe is that oh, we want pre-drilled holes. So they'll start to come out with five holes across the back. You only need to use two, but if you're in a high wind rating area, you want to put extra screws in or you accidentally break a screw, you've got more more spots to do that as well. Right. So yeah, the, the batten will be flush to here. I can see why it's precise uh, installed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, um, you want to be putting the battens down uh, as exactly. you're laying these. Yep. And make sure that everything lines up. Wow. It's a, yeah, it's a very swish looking product. Um, can we just turn it over yeah, one absolutely. more time because that's the it's the fun side. Um, so how many cells did you say is in a panel? Uh, so these ones, uh, I think it's thirty eight and thirty six. I think these are thirty eight. Yep. Just a half cut. And these are half cut. Yep. So, half cut. So cells. they have the sort of same advantages that you associate with half cut, where you basically have multiple subsections within a module. Or is it just one? There's two so subsections. Two subsections. So half and half. Right. And we're we're working on newer technologies and that sort of stuff, and how we can better place, you know, having advantages around the product. But as the cells are going to get bigger and bigger and different efficiencies, we we may actually look to run them different ways using rear contact. We might run quarter, three quarter cut cells or half cut cells up this way, that sort of thing. So um, we we constantly need to evolve with the technology. Ultimately, we need to get this at the lowest cost. Now, <clears throat> we're pretty certain that we've got the lowest cost solar tile on the market in Australia. Internationally, we also believe so, but you know, I can't make that statement because I'm not going to be bothered doing that much research. But we if we start to use a very bespoke custom cell, the cost is going to go up. So we're always looking at read, you know, what's coming in the future, size of cell, manufacturing process and technique to make sure that we can pack as much energy into the product as possible. Yeah, I can see what you're saying about the size of cells defining things too. So what, well, these are 182s? Uh, these are 166. 166. No, 161 and a half. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. I think I'd have to confirm that <laughs> a lot of numbers made. Because I think the uh, the solar farm industry is you know wants bigger, bigger, bigger cells. Well, everything's kind of two ten now. Yeah, that's right. Two so ten mil that, cells. Is huge. You, that would push this out further. Yeah, which you, you can't do, and that hence why you would do, use different type of cells. But yep. bringing the manufacturing here to Australia is going to give us a lot more control about you know a lot more security around you know design supply. Uh, our, one of our key things is keeping the IP here in Australia. We've yep. got a 
great product. We're distributed into Europe already, to Turkey, um, and and very shortly the States. So, you know, we, we want to make sure we keep the IP here, but we can manufacture here and export. So you've gone global really quick. Like you were in France just a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I got to I got to go to France and do an install. Um, you know, being, being the electrician and loving being on the tools, not that I ever am anymore, so it does become challenging. Um, the, the opportunity to actually go and do our first install in Europe was huge for me. Wow. Um, and we're going over to Turkey in a few months to install a 100 kilowatt system on one home. You might be doing a friend of mine's place in France. Yes, yeah, yeah. I got, I got the details. I've been in contact with him. So, um, yeah, the, look, the, there's a lot of demand. We've already got projects in Miami as soon as yeah. we've got compliance. Really I think there's different issues too. Like um, I hadn't realised that um, there was quite a lot of local government regulation around solar panels and yep. aesthetic considerations, especially, yep. you know, older buildings in rural areas. No mm -hmm. one wants to see blop, blop, blop panels stuck no. on top of a beautiful old building. Yep. But it was an, it's an existing tiled barn mm -hmm. uh, or slate, is it? I'm not sure. Mm. Um, so these would just blend in. Yeah, no, that, that's and and you literally don't see it. And so, uh, when when I go to a new country and 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 do sort of the data gathering exercise and building the strategy for that market, because every market's going to be different. An example is in the US, every home gets re-roofed after twenty years. Yep. All right, so they're re-roofing homes. So the re-roof market is as big or if not bigger for us every than the years. every 20 years. And so it's there's a re-roofing over there is huge. So the re-roofing market is probably a bigger opportunity for us over there mm. rather than the new home market. Uh, and uh, and there's also a lot of benefits. But when I was in the States uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I would spend time talking to anyone, whether I was in a bar or a restaurant or, or you know, tourists. And I, you know, like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do, I do, you know, a, a solar tile. And they're like, oh, that's fantastic. Like the Tesla roof. Yeah, absolutely. And be like, oh, because solar panels look shit. So there's a real a barrier in that market mm. because they don't want to see solar panels on the roof. They're like, we like the idea, but uh, yeah. there's no way we'd put it on our home. And that was the comment from most of the people I spoke to. I'm there. sure it's happened to you, but um, I had an install where uh, I've been talking to the husband and we're mm -hmm. putting panels on the north face of a new house in Melbourne go to do the install and the wife's at home and she goes, no, you're not putting them on the front of the house. You have to put them around the back. Put them on the south. On the south side. <laughs> yep. I go, but they won't work so well. I don't care. Yep. I don't want to see them. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that's it's a huge barrier to market. So you think about um, all the homes getting built, 100,000 homes in Australia per year. Yeah. It's roughly 50-50 tile tin, depending. Yep. Um, probably tile, tin's got a bit more of an advantage, might be 60% now. Um, but there's going to be a lot of homes that get built that have to have solar panels and they will be seen and they're going to look and they're going to go, well, we don't want we don't want solar because we don't want to see the panels. Too bad you have to. Well, what's the solution? So this is the solution. So the the, the we're not going to be 100 percent the market. We have no ambition to be 100 percent the market. But there's a real key space for people that don't want to see yep. solar panels on their home. And because we're not that much more expensive than a standard panel system, yeah, that the, there is a, it's a far more acceptable decision to turn around and go. Yes, absolutely, we'll do that. Hey, for my US viewers, they're going to ask about rapid shutdown. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with rapid shutdown requirements? So we're, we're we're working on that currently. Okay. Um, so we're, we're working pretty closely with some people on the standards committee there. Um, and uh, there's a couple of different solutions. Because we've got the cable trunk in system, we can get a lower voltage, but it'll probably just be very similar to having a rapid shutdown like you would use on a standard string inverter. Right. However, we're also working closely with um, Enphase right now as well right. about a solution to get... Um, end phase onto these products. Um, wow. So uh, the... AC <clears throat> modules? Not, it wouldn't be an AC like a sun power okay. because ultimately, you know, an end phase can take about 460 watts right now yep. and you've got to focus on cost. So yeah. you would need to string them together, but then there's barriers within the AS5033 about how... One and a half metres from the exactly. edge of the panel. Yep. Now, well, well, things have slightly changed in the AS5033 compared to last time. Much better. But yep. So, you know, it was a lot more restrictive and I used to just say absolutely no, no way. But so it's not cable distance now, it's location. Yeah. So we're working on solutions and, and talking to the team at ASV about, you know, methods and how we can go about finding a compliant solution to work. Um, it will obviously increase the cost, but Enphase is a great solution for the product particularly in the US market.
Right. Wow. Wow, that's a good one to crack too. I'm just amazed what you said. Every 20 years re-roofing. I mean, yeah. Is that designed obsolescence extreme? for? So the insurance companies uh, won't insure the homes yeah. unless the roof's replaced. So they've got obviously a different type of roof. So they've mm. got their trusses um, or their rafters and then they've got, they board all their roofs. Then they put a waterproof membrane, then they tile or tin or whatever it might be. Um, so they're very strict on their waterproofing uh, and in, you know, the the... Hurricane areas, particularly, like you won't be able to get insurance if you don't re But would you have to re roof if you had solar tiles? Yep. You would. Absolutely. So, okay. But, but so, like, for example, our roof tile, the last Gandala Planum roof tile, the Terracotta roof tile, that has a 100 year warranty color and product in the US market. So, so yeah. Say that again. A 100 year warranty. 100 year warranty. On color as well. It's the, it's <laughs> the world's highest quality roof tile. It's an incredible roof wow. tile. Wow. Um, you know, uh, like, the, yeah, it, it's it's an amazing product. And yeah. I've been around roofs for a very long time and I yeah. know my roof tiles and it's a it's a fantastic product. So if you're installing a roof tile here in Australia and you want a premium roof tile product, it's a Briz Tile Import, the last Candela. And so that's the, that is like the ultimate of ultimate roof tiles that you can buy. Yep. But what would happen is you would remove the roof tiles and then you would have to re-waterproof that roof with, with the tank in and then you would put the roof tiles back down. But they've also, you know, you talk about it, if roofs have to be replaced every 20 years. This is something I did not know about the US market. Uh, they don't batten their roofs very often. They stick the roof tiles to the roof oh. using a similar to an expander foam. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they'll just chalk line it. Yep. A little section of the expander foam on, and they stick it on. Yeah, it was quite entertaining. And, <laughs> and if you do not believe me, you YouTube it. Because I, I didn't believe I was out for dinner with a roofing company. Yeah. And they, I thought they were, you know, playing a joke. And then they actually showed me how they installed it wow. in a video on YouTube. So um, they still batten some, and obviously yeah. they'll have to batten for this. Video. Yeah, you won't be gluing these with no, spray foam. No, yeah. <laughs> no, you won't. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's really quite interesting how different markets work. But then if you go to Europe, um, they'll double batten. So they'll put battens up the trusses yep. on top of the membrane or the sarkin, and then they'll put battens across so you get a bigger air gap. So if you just batten going up a roof, like say you're going up a roof or that and you batten, you can't get airflow behind the product. Mm -hmm. But if you have a butt batten run up and then across, then you're getting airflow oh, through so the entire roof. Oh, so your like this. Exactly. Oh, so okay. you've got a proper air gap, whereas yeah. the air gap is sealed between the two battens yes. the way we do it here in Australia. Yes. By doing that, you're getting better thermal properties of the home. Right. You're getting better ventilation, better ventilation behind the product. Yeah, so you get yeah. a bit more power out of your cells. Yeah, you, you yeah. get better efficiency out of your oh, cells, right. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I suppose if you're building a new home in Australia, if you're really obsessed about it, you could double batten. Yeah, I mean, so part so the NCC changes is two things. There's one on the thermal envelope. Yeah. And then there's the energy budget. So the solar power doesn't have anything to do with the thermal envelope, you know, and the star rating as such anymore. So your thermal envelope is, you know, uh, insulation floors, wall ceiling, windows, steel members. So if you've got a steel beam coming from the outside of your home to the inside, that's going to transfer heat in and out. So you you you've got that section and. By by double battening, that would bring some advantages to your rating of your insulation, right? Your thermal rating of the home. Cool. Well, there's so much to it. I'm glad you, your expertise from construction industry and solar has come together with this product. Yeah. I mean, you, you really need to understand the construction side really well. That's right. Yeah. You do. And I, I did my cert for in building construction. I was planning on getting a builder's license once upon a time, but I have no interest in building homes. <laughs> um, so that's sort of been the real tie-in for me is understanding yeah. how buildings go together and what the requirements are, but then having a really clear understanding of solar because I've installed it for many, many years. Yeah. Oh, cool. Hey, it's been great talking to you, Peter. And look, I, I've never actually had a solar tile in front of me before, and this is a pretty impressive piece of kit. Yeah, so, it's, well it's done. pretty cool. Thank you. And yeah. and yeah, as I said, so we're we're partnering with a um, hundred solar companies around the country. Yes. Um, and I know your audience is predominantly going to be solar companies. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to reach out to even understand more about the construction code, the entry to the builders market, they're interested in Vault. You know, they just jump on our website and do an inquiry. So it's a um, it's a very unique product, but it is going to help solar companies 
sell more solar. And so we're partnering with quality solar companies to make sure that it's the quality ones that are going to be leading the charge into the building industry. Yeah. I'll put a link uh, down in the description uh, for following up on the details of uh, the product and how you can uh, get one. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> it's one of the questions I get from a lot of people is, you've shown me stuff, but where do you get it from? Yeah. Um, but this is this is not vaporware. It's available right now. Yeah. 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 No, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a great product. Mm. It's fully compliant with all Australian standards. So you see that sort of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it's just about training the teams to get to get rolling. Yeah, cool. Well, well done. Excellent. Well, let's go and check on your Tesla, see if it's charged up. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, mate. Cool. Hey there. I just noticed that only about 23% of viewers are actually subscribed to this channel. Well, it would be great if I had a few more for the algorithm, but also it's a way of kind of like a warm hug saying thank you to me for the content that I make for you. So usual story, uh, click the subscribe button, hit the bell and all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next video.